From the ready position, lift the knee up to a 90 degree angle with the front kick. Next, turn the leg 170 to 180 degrees radically by means of the waist and the front part of the foot. At this time, be careful of the angle of your waist and outer thigh and the turning degree of the supporting foot. Also, make sure the kicking leg is parallel to the ground. The moment you twist your waist after lifting the leg, the waist should be in a straight line with the supporting foot. At this moment, some turning force takes place by twisting the waist and the kicking foot. If you transfer this force to the target to the thigh and lower leg, it will be very effective. Here, I'll give you some more details about the turning force, that is, the spiral force. 70% of the human body is water. Therefore, striking a human body is like striking a water balloon. To strike such elastic objects, effectively you need some spiral force. If you kick only with a straight line force, the power will be dispersed. But if you put some spiral force into your kick, the power will go inside the target, which doubles the power's effectiveness. When you start practicing roundhouse kicks early on, focus on making the kicking leg parallel to the floor in the right motion. When you need fast roundhouse kicks, like in matches or when sparring, it is effective to lift the foot diagonally quickly and kick by snapping your leg and act. The moment you turn the body, the supporting foot is twisted 170 to 180 degrees. This angle comes about when the waist and thigh are both on a toward position. Otherwise, if only your leg kicks while your hip slips, the angle of your supporting leg becomes smaller. Finally, make a fast kick and retrieve your foot to get ready. From the ready position, raise your knee up to the 90 degree position. Second, turn the leg 170 to 180 degrees radically, using the power of your waist and the supporting foot. If you turn your body much faster, the heel of your foot will be slanted. Take this position and at the same time throw a fast kick. This way you can smash down your foot, which is very powerful in itself. Third, drag the kicking foot back to the initial position and get ready.
This exercise is to help turn your waist and supporting foot properly. Raise the knee and don't kick, but repeat turning the waist and the supporting leg in the right way. the leg fast using the lower leg. Lie on your side and fix the knee. Then kick repeatedly using the lower leg only. the speed of leaning your upper body and kicking. Relax without your weight fully loaded on either one foot and lean your body instantly to make a kick. At this moment, make sure not to make a kick after the upper body lies, nor to load the body weight on either foot to kick fast before you start leaning. This exercise is to shorten the distance to the target by straightening a straightened curve kick to make it faster. With two mitts apart, Kick not the first target, but the second one. The first target is placed to prevent a curved kick, so be careful not to kick this one. This exercise is actually done by many athletes, so I'd like to tell you about it. In the ready position, don't twist the supporting foot too much, and fold the knee only a little, then lift the leg straight up to a kick at waist height with the top of the snapping foot. The point of this is to reduce the kicking angle and shorten the distance to the target. <laughs> 